Hello, and welcome back to our discussion about pKa and pH. In this installment, we're going to talk about how you can use the pH and the pKa of a molecule to figure out what form of the molecule will be present. Will it be in the acid form or the conjugate base form? So that's what we're going to talk about. If you aren't familiar with pKa and pH, you can go back to the previous video where I talked about that. But for now, let's move forward. But first off, how does pH of a solution affect an acid or molecule? To figure that out, we'll have to relate pH and pKa. Just as a quick reminder, pH tells us about how much H3O plus is in a solution, where pKa tells us about the equilibrium between an acid and its conjugate base. So I'm sure you've been wondering why we've spent so much time talking about pKa's and pH. Well, now it's all going to come together. We're finally going to be able to tell, based on the pH of a solution or an area in your body, for instance, what form of an acid will be present. Will it be mostly the acid form or mostly the conjugate base form? And that's really the power of this whole system. So first we're going to look at this equation below. This was taken from the Smith textbook on page 369. So that would be in your supplemental materials on Blackboard. In this equation, this acid on the left is called acetic acid. Um, adds to water, and then there's an equilibrium arrow, then it forms the conjugate base plus H3O+. Plus. So hopefully you recognize this as the acid equation that we talked about earlier. In particular, we want to notice that H3O plus is on the product side. This is how we're going to be able to relate the pH to the pKa. So if you look at this equilibrium, um, let's look at the red conditions first. This says if the pH is less than pKa, then that means there's a higher level of H3O plus present. This should make sense because remember, low pHs are acidic solutions. Going back to our equilibrium, that means that we are increasing the product side. When you increase the product side, that's called a shift in equilibrium. This is often called the Chatelier's principle, so you may have heard that term before. Something has to happen to compensate for that increase in the products so that we can get back to the balance that we had before. Remember that equilibrium is a balance between the rate of the forward reaction and the backward reaction. It's not necessarily saying that there's an equal amount of the reactants and products. So it's not saying that this, there's the same amount of things on the left and the right. It's just saying that the rate going forward to make the products and the rate going backwards to make the reactants is equal at equilibrium. When we increase the product side, how does that affect the equilibrium? According to Le Chatelier's principle, the equilibrium should shift to the left. What that means is that when it shifts to the left, that there's going to be an increase in the amount of reactants to again compensate for the increase in product we already had, and so that way it'll balance out and take away that extra product. Um, that is going to increase the amount of reactants that you get for the moment to try to balance out the equilibrium so that the rate going forward and the rate going backwards can get to um, equilibrium again. Another way to think about this is that if you're in a solution with lots of H3O plus around, that means that this conjugate base can react with the extra H pluses that are on that water. So generally, it's more likely that the conjugate base is going to want to react with that and form the acid. A lot of the conjugate base is going to get protonated to go back and form the original acid form. Now if we look at the opposite conditions, that would be represented by the blue. Here we're saying that the pH is greater than the pKa, meaning we're in a basic solution. In a basic solution, there's not a lot of H3O plus present, so we're actually decreasing or taking away the products. Just like before, this is a shift in equilibrium, so Le Chatelier's principle says it's going to shift it to the right. So that's going to mean we're, we will have more of the conjugate base form. So in summary, if the pH is lower than the pKa when we're in a really acidic solution, that will have more of the acid form. When we're in a high pH where it's higher than the pKa, then that means we're going to have more base, so we'll have the conjugate base as the primary species. The most common question you'll see over this material will also be the most practical. It's given the acid and the pKa, what would be the major species present at each of the given pH levels? Remember, major species just means what form is it in, what molecule is it? This skill will directly relate to the biochemistry of amino acids. So again, if you're interested in amino acids and metabolism, or if you're interested in that for body and biological systems, that's going to be really important because one of the things you do with the amino acids is figure out this thing called the PI, and then that tells you what, um, what it looks like in different pH conditions.
So what for we find for these systems is if we put the pKa in the middle, so that's going to be some number of the pKa, when the pH is equal to the pKa, you're going to get an equilibrium of the two forms of acid and base. Then everything that's pH below that is going to be the acid form, and everything that's pH above that is going to be in the conjugate base form as the primary species or the major species. They'll still be in equilibrium, so they'll still be some of the other species. Let's look at an example. Here it says, given the acid and pKa, what would be the major species present at each of the given pH levels? And I've given you an equation. As you can see, over here there's a carboxylic acid plus water, um, equilibrium arrow, the conjugate base is already given, and H3O+. Sometimes you'll have to figure out that conjugate base, but in this case I just showed it to you. The other thing you need is the pKa of the acid, so that could be either one from our chart from our sum pKa's, or it could be one that's given. So in this case I've just given you the exact number. Let's try to figure out which form we would have. For the first one, it says in an acidic solution. So I've given you an example, say pH3. So at pH3, what's the relationship between that and the pKa? That's right, pH3 would be the pH less than the pKa. So which form should we have? That's right, we'll have the acid form. So we'll just draw the structure of the acid form. For the next question, it says in a neutral solution around pH7. This is going to be mostly which form? So at pH 7, is that below or above the pKa? It's greater than, right? So then because the pH is greater than, which form should we have? Right, we're going to have the conjugate base form. So we would draw that over here. Then for the last example, it says a basic solution, pH about 12. So because pH is 12, that means we're going to have it be a pH greater than the pKa, and it's going to be mostly which form? Right, we're going to have mostly the conjugate base again. So generally two of these are going to be the same and one of them will be different. That will always be the case because there's only two choices and we've got three things. Another possible question that we could ask about this type of setup is what pH is the acid equal to the conjugate base? So before we said if the pH is less than the pKa, then we get more acid. When the pH is more than the pKa, we get more of the conjugate base. So where do we think they would be equal? Well, we already saw that it's not in a neutral solution, so it's not like pH where we were said neutral was always in the middle. In this case, the middle is always going to be our pKa. So at the pH, um, when it's equal to the pKa, that's whenever your acid and conjugate base will also be equal levels. So hopefully that makes sense. So as with anything, one example is not going to be enough for you to totally understand it, so let's try a few more together. First, let's do example two, this HCN. We've got the pKa of the acid is 9.2, and we're going to try to figure out what's the major species present at each of these different pHs, acidic, pH 3, neutral, pH 6, basic, pH 12. What's the first thing that we're going to need to do for this one? Well, we definitely want to draw the conjugate base because that's the other form we could have. So looking at HCN, what would be the conjugate base of that molecule? Pause the video and write it now. Hopefully you got this. It should be taking off the H, CN with a minus chart. So that's our conjugate base form, and the original form is of course the acid form. So now that we know that, pause the video and try to figure out which species is present in the acidic, neutral, and basic conditions. Let's go ahead and check the first two. Is this what you got for acidic and basic? Hopefully you got it right. For almost every case, the acidic solution will result in the acid form of the molecule, and the basic solution will result in the conjugate base form of the molecule. But you always want to be careful and check that the pKa is not um, on the wrong side of that pH. However, the neutral one's always going to be a little bit more tricky. You're going to have to look closer because it could be on either side depending on the kind of acid that you have. So looking at this one, what would be the species present at the neutral pH 6? Right, that's going to be less than the pKa. So that means we should be on the acid form. So it should look like this. So hopefully that makes sense, but let's try another example to be sure we're getting it. So for this one, I want you to pause the video and draw the conjugate base of the acid that you see. This should be relatively easy by now because it was something we've been doing since the first acid-base activity. So this is what you should get for the conjugate base of the protonated amine that you saw. Now go ahead and pause the video again and determine the major species present for the three different solutions and draw them below. Is this what you got? 
Hopefully it is. If not, you can review some other sources or please contact me if you have any questions. So that's it for the basics of pH and pKa. The next step is we're going to relate these to drug chemistry. So make sure that you're all caught up and you feel comfortable with this level before moving on.